Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, chapter 5-2, pay periods and hourly rates. Okay, so over off to the right here, I have the vocabulary for this chapter. And I'll just quickly go through those. And the first one is direct deposit. That just means that you give your employer your bank information, routing number, account number, and when you get paid, it automatically goes into your checking account. So there's no more need to print checks, give you a check and have you have to go down to the bank to deposit it. It just gets deposited directly and from your um, employer to your bank account. An hourly rate obviously is getting paid per hour say $30 an hour or minimum wage is depending on the state could be 750 an hour could be $12 an hour uh, regular hours would be full time usually it's 40 hours overtime hours would be anything greater than those 40 hours and an overtime hourly rate there's usually a higher pay for people to who have to work overtime so if you make $20 an hour, you might make time and a half, which would be 20 plus 10 or $30 an hour for overtime. And there it is, time and a half overtime. Double time pay is simply that. If you make $20 an hour and say it's a holiday and you have to work it, they'll probably, if, it's, if they pay double time for holidays, then you would get $40 an hour. Gross pay is your pay that you, all your pay, your salary, without any deductions, okay? This is before taxes, before uh, medical expenses or medical, not medical expenses, but um, your health insurance, dental, um, social security, all those deductions come out of your gross pay and what you get in your paycheck is called your net pay. So gross pay is what you make before deductions. Minimum wage is by law an amount that you are not allowed to work for less than that. So if it's, I think, New York State, that's where I'm from, New York's uh, minimum wage has been around $7.50 an hour for a long time. I'm not sure if it's changed, but that just means that an employer cannot pay someone less than the state minimum wage. All right, so here we go. Example one, Christina is paid biweekly. Her annual salary is $37,000. What is her biweekly salary? Well, biweekly means every other week. And since there are 52 weeks in a year, divide that by two, and that's 26. So you take $37,000, how much you make in a year, and divide that by 26, which is your biweekly pay, okay? And 37,000 divided by 26 is 1,423.08. 1,423 $1 Okay, so bi-weekly pay. And that would be gross, of course. Okay, and now check your understanding. Pause the video, see if you can do this. Come back, see how you did. Carlos earns X dollars bi-weekly express his annual salary algebraically. So some amount of dollars every two weeks, or remember there's 22 or 26 bi-weekly periods in a year. So it'd just be 26 times what he makes per pay period. So it'd just be simply 26 X. Okay, example two says Manny is paid semi-monthly. Okay, semi-monthly. His semi-monthly salary is $1,239. What is his annual salary? So bi-weekly, let me just write this out here. There's a difference. So if I do bi-weekly, okay, that is every two weeks. So that'd be 52 divided by two is 26. Semi-monthly, Okay, semi-monthly just means twice a month. So there's 12 months in a year divided by two, and that is, I'm sorry, <laughs> not divided by two, 12 months times two, two times a month, and that would be 24. So semi-monthly, there would be 24 paychecks, 
and bi-weekly, there would be 26. So there is a difference between bi-weekly and semi-monthly, so be careful. So his semi-monthly salary is $1,239. What is his annual? You would take your his $1,239 and multiply it by how many semi-month periods there are, which is 24, and 1,239 times 24 is $29,736. Okay, and that is what his annual salary is if his semi-monthly salary is 1239. All right, so now check your understanding, pause the video, see if you can do this, come back, see how you did. Okay, so here we go. Alex is paid semi-monthly. His annual salary is Y dollars. Express his semi-monthly salary algebraically. So that's just taking his annual salary, and in this case, we wanna find the semi-monthly, so we have to divide by. 24. So it's y over 24. All right, example three says Maureen is a manager at a local Chicken King restaurant. Chicken King. Her regular hourly wage is $15.74. If she regularly works 40 hours per week, what is her regular weekly pay? Well, that's pretty simple. It's just $15.70 times how many hours she works, and that's it. And that would equal, let's put a couple zeros there, 7 times 4 is 28, carry the 2, 5 times 4 is 20, plus that 2, carry the 2, 4, 5, 6, $628 is what Maureen makes in a 40-hour work week before taxes. Okay, so now check your understanding, pause the video, see if you can do this, come back and see how you did. All righty, so here we go. Roger regularly works eight hours per week at a rate of D dollars per hour. Express his annual salary algebraically. Okay, so first you wanna find out how much he makes in one week. So D dollars per hour times the number of hours in a week is dh, d times h. But then that would be times, how many weeks are in a year? 52. So if I just clean that up and put my coefficient first, it'd be 52 d times h. Okay. Okay, example four says, if Maureen from example three works overtime, she receives an hourly rate of one and a half times her regular hourly rate. And if I go back and look, her hourly rate was $15.70 per hour. What is her hourly overtime rate? All you do is take her hourly rate, $15.70, and multiply it by 1.5 for one and a half times. Okay, and when I multiply 15.70 times 1.5, I get $23.55. Okay, and that's it. Regular pay times 1.5. All right, check your understanding, pause the video, see if you can do this, come back and let's do this. If Mary Ann earns Y dollars per hour regularly, express her hourly overtime rate algebraically if she is paid time and a half. Okay, so hourly rates Y, Time and a half is 1.5. So it's simply 1.5 y. Just like up here, that's what we did. 1.5, our y was 1570 for Maureen. So it's 1.5 times 1570. So in general, it's 1.5 times your hourly rate y. Okay, example five says Janice earns $16 per hour. Her regular hours are 40 hours per week and she receives time and a half for overtime. Find her total pay for a week in which she works 45 hours. Okay, so there's all the information we need. So it's 16 dollars per hour 
times 40. So let's just find how much she would make in a regular work week. 16 times two is 32. 16 times four is 64 with a zero. So she would make $640 for the first 40 hours. And she works 45. So obviously 45 total hours minus 40 regular hours equals five OT hours. Okay. So she's working time and a half. So then you want to take that $16 per hour times 1.5, and that would give you $24 per hour OT, okay? So she made $640 straight time. She's going to make $24 per hour overtime, and it was five overtime hours. So 24 times five is $120, okay? So she made $640 regular 40 hours and 120 for five more hours. So now we take her regular 40 hours salary plus her overtime salary for five hours and add them. And that's what she makes in a 45 hour work week. Okay, now it says check your understanding. So pause the video, see if you can do this, come back, and here we go. Ron regularly works 40 hours per week at a rate of X dollars per hour. Last week, he worked Y overtime hours at a time and a half. Express his total weekly salary algebraically. Okay. All righty, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so what it's going to be is 40 hours times X dollars per hour, there's his regular pay, and I'll put that regular pay. And then we're going to add what he made in overtime. So Y hours times 1.5 times his regular hours, or times his overtime hours, I mean, dollars per hour. So he's gonna make 1.5 times X dollars per hour overtime, and Y is the number of hours of overtime. So this is OT pay. So I'm going to simplify that. So it's going to be 40 X plus, and I'm just gonna clean this up and put the coefficient first, 1.5 X times Y. So it's 40 X plus 1.5 X times Y. Now, if I wanted to get really fancy, I could factor out an X from that and a 1.5, but I'm not going to do that, okay? So this would be our equation. Okay, example six, Samantha, a waitress, worked her 40 hour regular hours last week, plus seven overtime hours at a time and a half rate. Her gross pay was 6.1105. What was her hourly rate? Uh, I don't like the fact that they chose a waitress here because waitresses usually get a really small paycheck and they work for tips. But anyway, let's just assume that she's a salaried waitress. So no matter how bad her service is, she still gets paid, right? Anyway, so she worked 40 hours plus seven overtime hours, 40 hours plus seven hours of overtime, okay? Totaling 47 hours. Okay, I'm just making some notes here. And she works this at time and a half rate. Okay, that's 1.5. Her gross pay was 611.05. What was her hourly rate? So if I said $40 times so much hourly rate plus 1.5 times seven times an hour hourly rate. And that equals the total price, $611.05. Okay, so think of it that way. So then when I simplify this, I get 40 times an hourly rate plus that hourly rate times 1.5 times seven will be our overtime. And seven times five is 35, carry the three, seven and three is 10. So she'll be making 10.5. Times hourly rate. So what we're really doing is multiplying our hours by one and a half. So it's 10 and a half hours if we're at a regular hourly rate, if you will. And that will give us $611.05.
So now we're going to go back to algebra one, combine like terms, 40 plus 10.5 is 50.5 H equals 611.05. So then I'm going to go get my trusty calculator and take, and what we're going to do is divide both sides by 50.5. Okay, so obviously the 50.5 cancels here and I'm left with H equals. And so I take 611.05 divided by 50.5 and I get $12.10 per hour. Okay, so she makes 12.10 an hour plus 6.05 additional for OT, which would be 18.15 an hour after 40. Okay, so now check your understanding. Pause the video, see if you can do this. Come back and see how you did. Jillian worked her 40 regular hours last week, two overtime hours, double time rate. Okay, we haven't done that one yet. And her gross pay was $484. How about I clean this up and use a highlighter? That's what they're, that's what they're for. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight 40 regular hours last week, two overtime hours at a rate of double time. That's some nice pay, it must be a holiday. And her gross was 800 or 484. And they're asking, what is the hourly rate? Okay. So what are we going to do here? Um, 40 hours plus two hours of overtime at double time is times two, right? And her gross pay was $484. So that's how we would set that up. And then obviously simplify. So 40 times hourly rate plus two times two is four times hourly rate equals 484. Combine like terms. 44H equals 484. Divide both sides by 44. And of course, the 44s cancel here, leaving me with H equals. Go to my calculator, 484, divide 44, enter, and it's $11 per hour. That's her hourly rate. Okay. Okay, example seven says last week Saul worked R regular hours and T overtime hours at a time and a half rate, time and a half, 1.5. He earned $700. If X represents his hourly rate, so regular hours times his hourly rate would be Rx. Okay, so regular hours times hourly rate is R times X plus T is overtime hours times that time and a half, which is 1.5 X, okay? And that's going to equal $700, okay? So then when I simplify this, I get R X plus 1.5 T X equals $700. Okay, if I factor an X out of this, I get X times R plus 1.5 T equals $700. Okay, so it says express X in terms of R and T. I want to get X by itself. I will divide both sides by R plus 1.5 T. Okay, and of course, R plus 1.5 T's cancel, leaving me with X equals 700 divided by R plus 1.5 T. And there it is. Okay. All right. Check your understanding. Pause the video, see if you can do this, come back, and here we go. Jonathan works H hours at an hourly, hourly rate of R dollars. So that'd be R times H. He also works W hours at an overtime rate of double. So that'd be two times 
hourly rate of R dollars times W, right? W hours and his, his rate is now 2R expresses total pay in this algebraically. So it's RH plus 2RW and that's it. I could factor out an R and it'd be H, R times the quantity H plus 2W. Either way, anyhow. And now there's a extend your understanding. Okay, so Giovanna gets paid a regular pay rate of R dollars for 40 hours work. So that'd be 40 times R. She's paid at a time and a half rate for up to 16 hours of overtime work and double time for any time over that greater than 16 hours. Write a piecewise function in terms of Z. So P of Z or Z equals, and we're going to have three equations, okay? All right, so. Okay, so let's break this up into three different categories because there are three. So let me go to my highlighter and let me start with yellow. Uh, R dollars for 40 hours worked. Time and a half for up to 16 overtime hours worked. Double time rate for any overtime hours worked greater than 16. Okay, so there's our three pieces, if you will. Okay, so let's start with um, I'll use black so the yellow you won't be able to see. So R dollars for 40 hours worked. So I would just say R for, let's do that R, R for, and we would say um, R dollars for four H less than or equal to 40. Okay, so if our hours are 40 hours or less, we get paid R dollars an hour. She's paid at time and a half for up to 16 overtime hours worked. So that would be 1.5 R for H being greater than 40, okay, but less than or equal to, that's what up to means, 16 hours of overtime. So that'd be 40 hours to 56 hours. Okay, and then finally the third piece, double time rate is two times the rate, and that would be four H greater than 56 hours. Okay, so there's the piecewise function. Okay, example eight, a little bit different with this one. It's Michaela signed a five-year contract five-year contract for a new job. Her starting salary is 67K per year. Okay, that's her starting salary. And the salary increases 3% each year if they, if they review her work and it's satisfactory. So if she does a satisfactory job, if they're satisfied with her work, she'll get a raise of 3% every year. What is her salary in five years to the nearest dollar? Okay, so this one is a little bit different. Okay, this is going to be a geometric series. Okay, and if you don't remember what a geometric series is, it just means that we are going to take a first term, which we call a sub one, and we have a common ratio R. And our first term is our dollar amount that we're starting with. She's starting out at $67,000. Her pay raise is 0.03%. That is our R. And a formula for a geometric series is A sub N, where N is the number of terms. So I'm gonna put that over here as well. A sub N equals A sub one, which is our first term times one plus our R to the power of N minus one. That is a geometric series. Now I just have to substitute in what I'm given. They wanna know what her salary is in five years. That is our N. So I want to know A sub N and N is five. My A sub one is my first term or my starting salary of $67,000. And I put one plus R, which is 0.03 or 3%, and to the power of N, which is five minus one. So that will re simplify to A sub five equals $67,000.
times 1.03 to the power of four. I go to my calculator and I put 67,000 parentheses, 1.03, close the parentheses to the power of four. I get 75,409.09. Okay, so her salary went up pretty good in five years. She's making almost well eighty four hundred dollars more a year in year five. So her salary in year five would have been seventy five thousand four hundred nine dollars and nine cents if her work was satisfactory. All righty, so check your understanding. Now it's your turn. Pause the video, see if you can do this, and come back. So let me get my highlighter. Michaela signs a new three-year contract after her first five years. This is with a 4.1% annual increase now. What will her, will her salary be the eighth year with the company? Hmm. Okay, so she signs a new contract after her first five years. So her A sub one is going to be this 75,409. 0.09, okay? R is now 0.041 and N is three. So I wanna find A sub N, which equals A sub one times one plus R to the power of N minus one. And I want my A sub three and that's A sub one times one plus 0.041 to the power of three minus one. Okay, so A sub three is going to equal 75,409.09 times 1.041 squared. So A sub three is going to equal, and I get my calculator and I put 75,000, actually, let me just do this and hit uh, times, So it's that 75,409 that I've already got here times 1.041 to the power of two. And I hit enter. And she, in her third year or eighth year, which is her third year of her second contract, she'd be making 81,719.40. Okay, so she's starting to increase even faster.